Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video let's explore the question, does a good game sell itself? This is a question, or rather a statement, that is usually made by people unfamiliar with just how difficult it is in the indie game market. This video is meant as a companion video to the one I made on the most important skill you need in order to be a successful indie game developer. Make sure you watch that video before this one, especially if you have aspirations of being a successful game developer. In there I briefly talk about an example of a game that looked great, but failed to find success due to lack of marketing. So spoiler alert for the answer to the question in the title, no, a good game does not sell itself. So here let's look at another example and really dive deep and analyze why it failed and what the developers could have done differently to find success. My initial goal with this video was actually to cover multiple examples, but I think it's better to really dive deep into a single one. I have researched this game extensively to figure out why it failed to find success and what could have been done better, especially from the standpoint of marketing. And I will also give you some tips and hopefully you can apply those to your own game so that your game does not fall into this trap where you don't do any marketing and even if you have a good game, you still don't find success. And let me just quickly clarify the intent with making this video. The goal isn't to bash on this game, so if you're the developer, please don't take this the wrong way. In fact, the game that I chose is a game that I think looks great. I think it's very well made and the players that picked it up do enjoy it, so my goal with this video is to analyze what could have gone differently so that a game with this level of quality could have found success. And of course this is a learning exercise both for me and for you to see what we can learn from this example and learn what to do and what not to do so your future games have a better chance at finding success. So here is the game that I researched really heavily, it's called Gear Shifters. It's an arcade action car game, it's a pretty unique concept. Visually the game looks excellent, the cars look great and all of the effects are extremely high quality, features some interesting boss battles, a bunch of car customization with tons of upgrades and many levels. Even though car games is usually not a genre that I'm all that interested in, I still think this one looks great. Regardless if you're a fan of the genre or not, I think we can all agree that this is definitely a well-made game. This one is not something that was made by a beginner simply following a simple 5 hour course, this one is a proper well-made game. So that's the good news, the game looks great, and if we look at the reviews, we can see that it does have very positive reviews, however we can look at the number of reviews to get a sales estimate. Using the box ladder method, which means you multiply the review amount by a number between 20 and 70, depending on how optimistic or pessimistic you want to be, so let's say we multiply by 40. Currently the game has 25 reviews, so that times 40 means an estimated 1000 copies sold. At a price point of $25, that means around $25,000 gross revenue. That's not such a tiny number, but that's gross revenue, so it is not what the developer gets at all. From that gross revenue, then we have to take away refunds and chargebacks. Like I mentioned in the other video, one excellent newsletter is Game Discover Co, and they actually did a case study on refunds. They found that the rate for refunds is around 6 to 11%, and chargebacks are also around 1 to 2%. So for both of these let's assume 10%, meaning that the initial 25k gross revenue is now just 22.5k. Then we have to take away Steam's cut, so that leaves 15.75. After that we take taxes, which is going to obviously vary greatly depending on the specifics of the developer. Maybe on a low tax country that could be something around 10-20%, to and maybe in a high tax country maybe around 40-50%. to So let's take a number in the middle, let's say 30%. With that we calculate that the final total net revenue going into the developer's pocket is around 11k. That is much less than the initial 25k which by itself was already pretty small. And of course this is revenue, it's not profit, everyone has costs, the developers have to eat, so it's doubtful based on this number that this game turned a profit. So with this tiny amount we can definitely say that the game sadly failed to find success despite looking like a high quality good game. Now let's try to identify why that happened and what they could have done differently. Like I mentioned in the other video, one of the most important metrics is followers and wishlists, so let's begin there. We can go into SteamDB and we can see that the game had just 300 followers. Usually the rate of wishlists to followers is somewhere around 3 to 10x. It's a wide range depending on if the game participated in a Steam festival or did a free prologue or things like that. For this one I couldn't really find any of that, so for this game I think we can assume on the lower end of that scale, so they probably had around 1000 to 1500 wishlists. That is a very very tiny amount. Once again I'm going to mention the awesome Game Discover Co newsletter. 
By the way, this one isn't sponsored or anything. I really just love all of the data that they provide. They made a study to calculate first week sales from wishlists and the resulting median was about 0.2. Meaning that a game that launches with just a thousand wishlists will likely sell just around 200 copies on the first week. That does seem to track with the sales estimate of around a thousand units for this game. The game has been out for four months, so it likely sold around 200 copies on the first week, around 600 on the first month, and then 400 more in the following three months. So the first reason on why this game flopped is simply insufficient number of wishlists. With so few wishlists, very few people were notified when the game came out, then even fewer of those converted into sales, which in turn caused the Steam algorithm to just bury this game under tons of other games that were simply selling better. Again, that does not mean that those other games were better than this one, it really just means that this one did not sell well compared to the competition right at the start. And that start is very important, Steam essentially promotes more of the games that do sell and less of the games that don't sell. We can also see that the Steam page only went live in April and the game released in September. That's just 5 months, pretty short amount of time to gather wishlists, especially with limited marketing. From what little I could find, it seems the game was in development at least since early 2020, but I cannot find any mention of it before it was officially announced. There's no alpha or beta screenshots anywhere. The only thing I could find on the game was really just screenshots with the game already fully polished. So my tip to you is get that Steam page up and running as quickly as possible so you have as much time as possible to gather wishlists and of course post as much as possible. Obviously you do need to have something to show but don't wait until everything is perfectly polished. As long as you chose a nice hook for your game you can definitely post alpha and beta screenshots to start gathering an audience that will actually be interested in your game. It appears the game did not have any marketing beyond an announcement and a gameplay trailer. The publisher really only has a thousand subs on YouTube, although the trailer does have 30,000 views, so that suggests that they experimented with some paid marketing. I also couldn't find any launch trailer, so that suggests not much of a push when the game actually went live, which you absolutely need to do. Again, the goal is increase the number of day one sales, so launch day should have a big push. I did manage to find a single mention on Reddit on a shmup subreddit. Like I said in the other video, one good way to use Reddit is to go to subreddits of the genre of your game, but it seems like this one was posted by a player, so not really even the developer. The game does have a Twitter account, but almost zero followers. The developer has a bunch more, but not too much. This one is a very gifable game, and the store page has some great gifts. They did post some gifts on Twitter, but nowhere near enough. They pretty much just started posting one month before release and at a very slow rate of maybe just one per week. The gifts themselves are great, I think they are very visual, they showcase the game in a great light, so I think that if they had just posted more over a longer period of time, that alone would have made a huge difference. These are the kind of gifts that have the chance to do well on Twitter, Imager, Reddit and possibly on TikTok. So another tip to you, if your game is gifable, make tons of gifts in advance, then slowly release them on every single one of those platforms, maybe 3 to 5 per week. Just imagine if the game had the Steam page visible for 12 months and posting 3 gifts per week, that would be 156 gifts, meaning that's 156 chances of finding viral success. Also, the lack of a clear hook didn't help. I mentioned the excellent talk by Ryan Clark in my other video, having a good hook is really essential to standing out. The game is clearly very well made, but there's nothing too unique about it. It's a great looking top down car shooter. It's interesting, but not something you absolutely feel you need to try. For example, a game with a really strong hook is super hot. The tagline is time moves when you move, and as soon as you hear that, you know you absolutely need to try it. It's a very unique, very compelling hook. Whereas here, it's a car combat game, so that's more unique than a simple car driving game, but not too hooky that you absolutely need to try. Then we get to price, which might also have slightly hurt the game. It looks excellent at doing exactly what you expect, but like I mentioned, there's no unique hook. It's really just a very well-made game. Charging $25 nowadays is a really a premium price point for an indie game. You really need to give the player something truly special for that price point. Just think of all of the awesome games that you could get for that amount. $25 is definitely on the upper range of the AAA indie games. And it is an especially high price, especially when you have a low amount of wishlists. With that few people that already know about the game, you're really only going to sell to impulse buyers, and $25 is way off on the impulse range. Now as to what I think the game did well in terms of marketing, I think the trailer is great, and like I said, the game itself looks great. Marketing is very visual, so the fact that the game looks great definitely helps. 
The name is also pretty good. It's unique, but not too unique. That's a good thing. You want your game to give the player some idea of what the game is like, but you also don't want it to be too unique that no one will remember it. I think the capsule image is well made, and the store page is very well crafted with tons of high quality GIFs. That's all great. They also have a mailing list on their website, so that's good. Although, not sure how much traffic they get on the website, so without driving people towards it from external sources, I would guess they really didn't have many signups. So in the end, it really comes down to those wishlists. The game launched with a very tiny amount of wishlists, which means no one knew about it. Answering the question in the beginning of the video, does a good game sell itself? In this case, the answer is a very clear no. The game looks great, the reviews like the game, but it absolutely did not sell itself. Now, I should also mention that this one is also available on the PlayStation Store, on Xbox, and on the Nintendo Switch. And on top of that, it even has a physical edition. So, it's possible that maybe this game as a whole did find success. It's possible that it sold much better on those other platforms compared to Steam. So, in the end, maybe it might have done well. But still, we can say for sure that this game, despite looking like a great game, definitely flopped on Steam. However, this is also not necessarily the end of this story. On Steam, you can participate in the weekly sales every two months, and you have the regular Steam sales on spring, summer, and winter. Given how the game is of a high quality, I do think it will have a decently long tail. As the discount goes up to 50% and higher, I do see the game selling more and more, and if more and more people enjoy and review the game, it will possibly be promoted more and more. Again, coming back from a difficult launch is extremely difficult, but even if you can't really come back from a bad launch, you can still have a decent tail. Also, one quick note specifically on the Steam algorithm, there are four buckets of reviews which greatly affect visibility. If you have less than 10 reviews, the score isn't even visible. This is really bad, so you absolutely need to get 10 reviews ASAP. The next one is between 10 and 49 reviews. At that point, you do see the score, but it's still pretty bad for visibility. The next one is above 50 reviews. This is where you want to be as quickly as possible. Ideally on the first day, or maybe second or third, by then you should really be at 50 or more reviews. If not, it's a really tricky start. And the final one is at 500 reviews. That one is really tricky, and that's when you start seeing scores like overwhelmingly positive. As you can see, this game did not manage to hit 50 reviews, even now several months after release. Until it gets that much, it's going to be really tricky to attract a large amount of players. So my tip to you as a game developer is definitely encourage your players to leave reviews. And also my tip to you as a player, if there's a game you're playing and you're enjoying it, do make sure to write a review, they really help the developer. Again, let me mention one more time, if you're the developer of this game, please don't take this video as negative criticism. I'm literally saying the game is good, and I think sales are subpar compared to the quality of the game. I really don't want anyone to see this video as me bashing on some game that didn't do well. I know what it feels like to have a flop, and I really don't want to make anyone say worse. All I want to do with this video is explore and learn from this example so that you or I can have better chance of finding success with our games. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos kind of like this where I dive deep into some game and investigate why it did not do well. I think that could be a useful format to learn more about marketing and how to actually find success with your games. Learning from others' mistakes is one of the best ways for you to avoid those same mistakes yourself. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.